In this tutorial video, we will make an example with the combo box object, which is often used when developing a desktop application with the Qt library in the Python programming language. So let's start. You can download and develop the source codes of the project in this video from the Turtle Code GitHub account. Before starting the project, you can support us by following the Turtle Code YouTube channel and other social media accounts. Let's start the design process of the project. We will use the Qt Designer program in the design part of the desktop application. Create an empty project. Add one combo box element to the project design. Set the size of the combo box. Add three buttons to the project design. We will use these buttons for uploading, displaying, and deleting. Add a label to the project design to display the user selection on the screen. Name the three buttons you added. To access the objects in the project design, we must specify the ID. Let's start with the combo box object. Specify an ID to access the combo box object during the coding process. We will use the Get Item button to show the user selection in the label. Specify an ID to assign a task to the button during the coding process. We will use the Load Items button to load options into the combo box object. Specify an ID to assign a task to the button during the coding process. We will use the Clear Items button to delete the options we have loaded into the combo box. Specify an ID to assign a task to the button. We will show the user selection on the label. For this, set an ID to the label. As I said before, we will frequently use all the IDs we have determined in the coding process of the project. We can increase the text size of the label to see the user selection better. Increase the text size of the label. Save the project design. Make sure the saved file is the same as your main Python code file. If the project design file and the main Python code file are not in the same folder, you cannot access the code file. Let's start the coding process of the project. As you can see, the design file we saved has been added to our Python project file. We need to convert it to Python file to use it in our main Python code file. For this, go to the terminal section. Here we will convert the design file into a Python file by doing some coding. Then we will transfer the converted Python file to our main Python code file and use it. With this coding, we can convert our design file to a Python file. Press the Enter key on the keyboard. As you can see, our Python code file has been added to our project file. A class containing design encodings has been created inside the Python code file. This class contains all the objects and properties that we use in the Qt Designer program. As you can see, we can see all the objects we added in the design with their properties. Now let's create our main Python code file. Transfer the sys module to start and terminate our desktop application without errors. Transfer the required Qt widgets library to use the features of our desktop application. We converted the design file into a Python code file. Transfer the class from the Python code file to the main Python code file. Inside the main Python code, create a class that we will use to assign and manage tasks to objects. Pass the Qt widgets and QMain window parameters to this class for task and management operations. Define a main function inside the class. We want to access all functions inside the class using the self parameter. For this, create the super parameter and make the self property available for all objects. Sync the self parameter with the class in the Python design code file. Activate the self parameter in the class. Create a desktop rendering function outside of the class. In order for the desktop application to work properly, send the required argument from the sys module we will be using. Create a desktop application from the class we created. Show this desktop application on the screen. 
Send the required argument from the Sys module so that the desktop application closes without error when the close button is clicked. Call the function and run it to check the project. As you can see, we managed to run the desktop application we designed in our main Python code file. Create a variable to add options inside the combo box object. For this we used the ID of the combo box element. We can check all the IDs we have determined again from the Qt Designer application. We will add three football teams to the options of the combo box object. Let's add the Real Madrid option to the combo box. Add the teams Barcelona and Liverpool to the combo box. Run the project and test it. As you can see the options have been added to the combo box. We can use the connect method to see the index numbers and texts of the options we selected from the combo box item. We need to define a function with the connect method. Create a function with the function name you specified. Ask for the index parameter to the function. Show this index parameter in the console with the print command. Run the project and test it. As you can see, we can see the index number of the selected option on the console. Now let's see the text instead of the index number of the selected option using the connect method. For this, specify a function name with the connect method. Create a function with the function name you specified. Ask for the text parameter to the function. Show this text parameter in the console with the print command. Run the project and test it. As you can see, we can see the index number and text of the selected option in the console. We understood how the codes work. Now let's do a different application. Delete codes for new application. We will assign a task to the load items button that we created in the design part of the project. We can use the click and connect methods for this. Specify a function name along with the click and connect method. Create a function with the function name you specified. Create a variable and add the names of several football teams. Add the variable we created using the combo box elements ID to the combo box element. Thanks to this function, when we press the load items button, the newly created football teams will be added to the combo box item. Run the project and test it. As you can see, there are three football team options in the combo box item. Press the load items button and add the names of other football clubs to the combo box. As you can see the names of other football clubs have been added to the combo box. Let's add the first football teams we added to the variable. Now we can delete the football team names that we added at the beginning of the project. Run the project and test it. As you can see, there is no option in the combo box when the desktop application starts. When the user clicks the load items button, football team names are added to the combo box item. Now let's assign the clear items button the task of deleting the options in the combo box item using the click and connect methods. For this, specify a function name along with the click and connect method. Create a function using the function name you specified. We have to use the combo box ID to clear the options in the combo box. We can delete the names of football teams in the combo box item with the clear method using the combo box ID. Run the project and test it. There is no option in the combo box when the desktop app starts. Click the load items button and add the options to the combo box object. As you can see the options have been added to the combo box. Now delete the added football team names by pressing the clear items button. As you can see all the options in the combo box object have been deleted. We assigned the load items and clear items buttons using the clicked connect methods. Now let's assign a task to the get item function using the clicked and connect methods. For this specify a function name with the clicked connect method. Create a function with the function name you specified. When we click on the Get Item button, we can see the index number and text of the selected football team on the console. Run the project and test it. 
Click the Load Items button and load the options. Options loaded. By clicking the Get Item button, you can see the index number and text of the football team you selected on the console. As you can see, we can see the name and index number of the football team selected by the user on the console. Click the Clear Items button and clear the options. In addition, we can see all the options in the Combo Box object on the console screen. For this, find the number of options with the count method and synchronize it to a variable. Create a for loop and you can see all the options on the console screen when we press the get item button using the item text method. Run the project and test it. Load the options by clicking the load items button. You can see the text of all the options in the console by pressing the get item button. Finally, instead of seeing the name of the football team selected by the user on the console, let's see it in the label we created in the design part of the project. Delete the codes for this. Create and synchronize a variable with the current text method using the combo box ID. This is how we can find the name of the football team selected in the combo box. Using the ID of the label we created, change the text of the label with the set text method. Run the project and test it. Add the options to the combo box. After selecting any option, click the Get Item button. You can see the name of the football team you selected in the combo box object on the label in the desktop application. In this tutorial video, we made an example of the combo box object that is often used when developing a desktop application in Python. If you have any questions let me know in the comments. You can also support us by subscribing to the Turtle Code YouTube channel and other social media accounts.